welcome guys so this is the maybe the final theorem the final uh, important theorem in the complex analysis that uh, at least up to now i will i would like to prove so we proved some closed integral theorems and uh, some uh, morel theorems and the next time uh, at this time we want to prove the duvernier theorem uh so what is duvernier theorem says so let's say that if of f of z is uh analytic uh on a whole complex plane and fz is bounded uh actually there's a very abstract version of the vanilla theorem in the algebraic geometry but i will not prove it okay so if fz is and on c and the uh, fz is bounded then the okay so bounded means that uh let's say f of z the absolute value of z less than n what's on m then of z is just constant so only constant function can survive like uh, analytic on c okay okay so uh yeah that's it okay so th i think everyone knows about uh, remember theorem so let's prove it uh the proof is just using the cozy uh, integral theorem right so let's say uh, everyone know everyone remembers about about uh, okay so let's say f of z is analytic right so that means uh, one can write f of z as a uh, can make a tighter expansion or basically a Laurent expansion along uh, z to, uh, along the zero because f of z is analytic right so there is nothing uh, 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 makes us uh, cannot do this Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so this is one way, right? So let me check. Hmm? <laughs> okay, maybe maybe we do not use this. Okay, maybe we maybe we just do this. We just do that f prime of z zero as uh, one over uh, two pi i f of z z minus zero squared. Right, dz. We just use this formula, okay? So c, and uh, let's say we take we take a c right to be a ready uh, to be a region at the origin of z as or origin and the radius r, and uh, f prime of z zero just absolute value will less than one over two pi. We just take the absolute value of this function, so f of z dz z minus z zero square. Okay, and uh, let's try to bound this right two pi. So z can just r exponential i theta. We take absolute so dz will be uh, r exponential i theta d i d theta. So absolute value of this will be r, right? R and f of z uh, will less than m, right? And then this is r squared. So it will less than uh, less than m divided by r, right? Because there is a d theta, so d theta integral will be two pi. Right, so s zero as r goes to infinity. So that means if you if you take any point z zero, right, then uh, if you use this large r to to control it, then the if you take any z zero on a complex plane, then at that point you can take r to be infinity. So we show that at prime zero on a whole complex plane, right? So by definition, f is a constant. So only constant can have all zero points on c, right? So this is also easy to prove. Okay, and I think this is a uh, good things, a uh, good way to start it, a uh, good way to start us uh, to stop and uh, do a new theory. And the next things uh, I want to prove is that that uh, how to use uh, a new theorem. Probably this is the first theorem that people in the uh, uh, prove the fundamental theorem of algebra. At least this is the first time. Okay, how to use the this theorem to prove the fundamental theorem of the algebra okay so the proof will be uh so the fundamental theorem of algebra means that uh, if p of z is uh n's uh n should be less than not or equal to one n's degree uh polynomial uh with coefficient c or basically uh you can write 
P just belongs to C X, right? So this is just polynomial ring. Okay. Then P has a uh, n roots. Okay, so uh, so what I prove is I only prove that P has one root, right? And the reason is that if P have one root, let's say Z0, then I can just take a P of Z divided by Z minus Z0. And I will get a minus degree uh, polynomial ring, right? Because this is field, right? So I can, so the division algebra, uh, so CZ, uh, C of Z can use the division algebra to, to, to prove. Okay, so let's prove this uh, famous theorem. So the proof is that uh, I just take a g to be uh, one over p z. So g is uh, so suppose so let's say uh, suppose uh, there is no roots. So there is no roots of p z. Then one over p z is so one over p z will be analytic, right? Take, because uh, polynomial is continuous, right? And uh, there is only there is no z z uh, z star, right? So g of z will be analytic analytic and the result is that the g g of z is analytic and we want to show that g is bounded so we want to show g is bounded and the by a Louvenil theorem then we will show that then this means that g of z is a constant but we know that g of z is 1 over pz right cannot be constant so this is a contradiction contradiction happens here Okay, so the remaining part is that uh, if I I write I write one over p z, then g g of z will be bounded. Okay, and uh, the proof uh, I think all of this only uh the rest is just the uh, simple analysis. So basically, you can if you write one over p z, right? You can take a, a large region, and at this region that the uh, one over p uh, p z is bounded, right? And the reason is that the uh, the reason is that the uh, p of z is a uh, the absolute value of p of z is a continuous function along a compact set, right? So there must be a bounded m. Then next you just take a you just try to bound this bound this right by uh, assume that z larger than r, and uh, so then the first term will be a and z n. So as uh, z very large, then the first uh, the first term in the denominator term will dominate, right? So this term will be one over will be less than some constant divided by a into r. So must be bounded. So that means you can show that out, outside of it's it's also bounded. So, and let's say m m m m one is the bound for the outside. Then you just take m to be the uh, maximum of these two. Then you show G is bounded. Then once you show, then so G is bounded. That means G Z, uh, G of Z is a constant by the Lewis-Neal theorem. So this is a contradiction. So the algebra, the fundamental theorem of algebra is correct. Okay, so let's remind what you get. So we start from the Cauchy integration, and then we go to the uh, Lewis-Neal theorem, right? And then finally we prove the fundamental theorem of the algebra. Okay, so maybe next time I will provide a very, a very uh, abstract proof for the Lewis-Neal theorem in the algebraic geometry. Okay, and I will see you guys in the next videos.